begin. Yeah. So fluid statics, unit six. Uh, so in, in this part, we are going to learn about uh, pressure, atmospheric pressure. Uh, we are going to learn about uh, density of the different objects, especially density of the fluid, liquids, gas. Uh, we are going to learn about their density as well. So first of all, let's start with the pressure. What does pressure mean? Uh, the, the force per unit area is called pressure. As you remember, force per unit area, force per unit area is called pressure. Uh, we use uh, the formula uh, force over uh, area to find the pressure, force over area. It can be anything, it can be like a circle, it can be a square, it can be a triangle. We are going to find their areas and then when we divide, uh, when we apply to this formula, like force over area, we are going to find the uh, pressure on the object. The assignment of pressure is Pascal. You can see Pascal, okay? Sometimes you're going to see that in atmosphere, ATM. Sometimes you're going to see that uh, Newton per meter square. These are all the uh, units of the pressure, but the SI unit is Pascal, okay? The SI unit of pressure is Pascal. So one Newton, as you see from here, you can check it out. One Newton equal one Pascal times meter square. When you crisscross it from the formula, one Newton will be equal to one Pascal times one meter square. So from chemistry, as you remember, 760 centimeter mercury equal to one atmosphere for pressure or 10 power 5 pascal, which is 100,000 pascal, okay? 100,000 pascal equal to 75, 76 centimeter mercury. You are going to see this in chemistry as well. So don't forget that one. Uh, so pressure again is, me is measured uh, in pascal. One pascal equal to one newton per meter square. Uh, the pascal is the SI unit of uh, pressure. It derived from force and area. Uh, also, one newton per centimeter square equal to 10,000 pascal. Okay, this is also important. This information: one newton per centimeter square equal to 100, uh, 10,000 pascal uh, pressure. Okay, so we have a few questions. Let's solve these two que uh, these questions together, uh, and then we are going to move on. We have just four questions over here. A boy weighs 500 newton and the soles of his feet have an area of 0.05 meters square. When you see the feet over here, let me just take the pointer over here. When you see the feet, that means it is both foot, okay? Feet, feet means your two legs, okay? So area of 0.05, so uh, determine the pressure he exerts when he stands. So to find the pressure, what is the pressure formula? Pressure equal force over area, right? Yeah, yes. So for two, uh, for his feet, for his feet, we are going to uh, take uh, the force, 500 Newton, and the area will be 0 0.05, okay? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Yes. When we divide these two, we are going to get uh, 50,000 over 5. It's going to be 10,000 Pascal, okay? 10,000 Pascal, the pressure. This is for his feet. What about for B? This is A, part A. What about 4B? 4B, it says on one foot. That means the area will be half of it, okay? So to find the area first, we are going to find the area for one feet. It's going to be 0 0.05 over 2, right? 0 0.05 over 2. That is going to be the area. So which is going to be 0 0.025, okay? 0 0.025 meters square. Yes. So to get the... As you see, the area gets lesser. When the area gets lesser, the pressure gets larger, okay? So to find the pressure mm -hmm. here, we're going to say 500 over this time, 0 0.025, okay? 0 0.025. Okay. When you divide it, you're going to get... 2,000. 2,000. Yeah, it's going to be like, uh, let me see. Multiply here by 1,000. Uh, it's going to be 500,000. 2,000. Right? Over 25, it's going to be 20,000, okay? 20,000. Hello? 20,000. Thank you, Mr. 20,000 Pascal, okay? So the answer will be 20,000 Pascal for uh, this question. Thank you very much. So example two, let's check the example two. A book rests on a desk, it covers, measures like 20 centimeters by 25. That means it's a rectangle over here, okay? 25. No, no. Let's draw a rectangle over here. Okay. Rectangle. 
let's draw a rectangle over here. So rectangle has 20 by 25 centimeter, 22, 25. So here, this part is going to be 25 centimeter. And this part is going to be 20 centimeter, OK? So first, let's find the area. How do you find the area of a rectangle? You have Thanks, over width. Length times width, right? Length times width. So 20 times 25. 20 times 25. But first of all, let's convert this centimeter into meter. How many meter is 20 centimeter? Can you guys tell me? It is 0 0.2, right? 0 .2. Yes. yes. At 25 is 0 0.25, 25. right? Yes. When you multiply okay. these two, you're going to get 0, 0. Point, uh, 0. When 5. you multiply these two, yes, you're going to get 0 0.2 times 0 0.25. You're going to get 0 0.5. 0 0.05. 0 0 0.05 meter square area, okay? 0 0.05 meter square. Okay. That is going to be our area. So to find the pressure then, pressure equal, again, if you have pressure over here, we are going to find force, right? So force over yes. area. To get the force, we are going to crisscross this. So force will be equal to pressure times? P times area. Pressure times area, right? OK. Yes. yes. So our pressure is 100. So 100, 100 times, times. 0 0.05. 0 point. It's going to be five, five Newton, OK? Yes. We are going to get the force 5 Newton. All right? Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. All right. Let's continue then. Thank you. So next, we have another two questions. I'm not going to go over these questions, but uh, question number four. Let's just go over the question number four. Uh, at the at the end of the like pressure part, I gave you a, 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 like a hint about these questions. One newton per centimeter square equal to ten thousand pascal. Okay, don't forget this. Ten thousand pascal. Mm -hmm. So what about 0 0.08? 0 0.08 pascals, uh, uh, Newton per centimeter square, how many pascals? So you're going to crisscross this, OK? So to find the, okay. this, it's going to be 10,000 times 0 10, 0.08, OK? Times 0 0.08. When you multiply this, you're going to get 8,000, mm. uh, 800, sorry, 800. 800 pascal okay okay so it's gonna be 800 pascal the answer so when you convert 0 0.08 mm -hmm. newton per centimeter square to pascal you're going to multiply by 10,000 and you're going to get 800 pascal 800. yes okay this is going to be our answer okay. let's continue then so let me just take our continue so what causes air pressure what do you guys think? What causes the air pressure? Air okay. pressure with the pressure. Yeah, pressure due to the air, right? This is the weight of the air. So basically, the weight yes. of the air causes the pressure, OK? So one cubic meter of air mm -hmm. has around one kilogram. And there were 10 Newton, uh, like weight. Yes. The simplest way to think about the pressure is like three to as it has weight, OK? When the air particles are okay. near a surface, some some of them will bounce into the and uh, when they bounce into the uh, air, they are the going first. to exert a force uh, a force on the surface. Okay, and this okay. is going to give the rise to a pressure. So air pressure, like as you see over here, the particles are bouncing. When they apply the force on a surface, this is going to give a pressure on the surface. Okay, this is going to give okay. a pressure on the surface. So let's continue. And this is the air pressure part. What about atmospheric pressure? The atmospheric pressure uh, caused because of the atmosphere, OK? Because of the atmosphere that surrounds us. What is atmosphere? Uh, the layer of the air surrounds the Earth, OK? It's called atmosphere. The layer of the air surrounds the Earth. It's called atmosphere. We have around like uh, approximately 40 kilometers tall atmosphere uh, above us. We cannot say exactly like 40 kilometers, but it is around 40 kilometer, okay? It's around 40 kilometer. So when uh, this atmosphere, when it's pressure on us, uh, this causes the atmospheric pressure on a body. As you see over here, there is a body over here, and you can see the atmospheric pressure all over the body, okay? Uh, 
the green arrow shows the uh, pressure inside of the body. The red arrow shows the, uh, the pressure due to atmosphere. So we call that pressure atmospheric pressure. All right. So uh, it, atmospheric pressure is like, it looks like equilibrium state. Okay. And so it, there is an equilibrium state between the pressure in our bodies and surrounding atmosphere. So there is an equilibrium over there. So what does this mean? It means like the, the, ex, the force applied on our body, the sum of the forces uh, uh, like uh, exert on our bodies uh, are zero. Okay, the sum of them. So, so how big is atmospheric pressure? Uh, when we talk about the sea level, like sea level means like if you live next to the shore or like coast of the sea, let's say uh, next to the like ocean or like lakes, at that part, the atmospheric pressure is 101,000 Newton, okay, at that part. When you go up, when you go to the, like high places, the atmospheric pressure gets lesser due to uh, less uh, particles, okay. When you go to the up, the, the, uh, think about it, when you go to the up, you're, you guys are going to feel like you cannot even breathe because there are less oxygen particles over there. That's why this is going to happen. This is because this is because of the high pressure over there. Okay, there is going to, there is going to be less pressure over there. Okay, so at sea level it's one hundred one thousand. When you go up, it's going to get lesser than one hundred thousand. Uh, if you dive into the sea, you are going to have more pressure at that time. So the pressure will be more than one hundred one thousand newton when you dive in the sea. When you, if you guys uh, swim, you are going to uh, experience more pressure at that time. Okay, so a vacuum pump, uh, it's an example for the uh, application of the atmospheric pressure, a vacuum pump, or the vacuum cleaner that you use at home, it is an application of uh, atmospheric pressure, or you can just apply the siphon that you use at home as well, uh, as the application of atmospheric pressure in your daily lives, okay? So what effect does altitude have on atmospheric pressure? Again, we talk about it at the sea level, when it's zero, degree, zero meter, it is going to be 101 uh, Newton or Pascal pressure. Uh, when you go up like around 1000 meter, this is going to be 90,000. When you go to the 2000 meter, it's going to be 79,000. When you go to the 30,000 meter, it's going to be 270 meter. When you uh, go above 40,000 meter, like 40 kilometer, what's gonna happen? You are gonna go out of the atmosphere, so you're not going to experience any pressure because there is no air at that at that point. It's going to be just vacuum, so there's not going to be pressure over there. Okay, so that's why at thirty thousand, as you see, the pressure is very low. It is two hundred seventy pascal. Okay, so as the altitude increases, it increases the atmospheric pressure decreases. They are inversely proportional. Okay, the altitude and the atmospheric pressures uh, pressure are inversely proportional don't forget that so how do we measure the atmospheric pressure uh, there is a device called barometer okay we use we use that device to measure the atmospheric pressure and there are many types of the barometers uh, we can say we are going to learn about two of them the first one is mercury barometer it is very inconvenient what does inconvenient means like it's not trustable uh, uh, it's heavy it contains a liquid liquid which is mercury and it's very uh, mercury. It's very hazardous. It's very dangerous. If you like, uh, if it go go like, if you leaks, if it leaks outside, it is going to poison you. So that's why it's not uh, like recommend to use a mercury barometer. So therefore, there is another barometer that we use. It is called aneroid barometer. Yeah. It is commonly used. It is compact, portable. It's easy to carry. So here, uh, this is a mercury barometer on the left, as you see. There is, a there is mercury over here inside of the, uh, like a dish over here. When the atmospheric pressure, pressure applies on it, it rises and it shows how much atmospheric pressure uh, a body experience. You see over here. And the other one is uh, uh, like this, the, on the right, you, you can see the uh, anaerobic barometer. Okay, anaerobic barometer is very useful. It seems complicated, but it's not complicated. It just has corrugated metal box inside. Uh, there is a partial vacuum over here, partial vacuum. There is a very small movement over here, okay? And there is going to be large movement outside of the unread barometer because of the atmospheric pressure. And this, help, uh, this helps us to 
just uh, measure the atmospheric pressure easily. It is more reliable than the mercury barometer. Okay. So you guys are going to see that uh, 760 millimeter mercury all the time. So what is the reason? 760 millimeter mercury means this generally uh, used for mercury barometers. Okay. For mercury barometer, we said that one, one atmosphere, one atmosphere pressure, height of the column of the mercury in a barometer is equal to 760 millimeter. Okay. 760 millimeter. So we can prove this mathematically. I wanted to show you this actually, but since there is no, like, we don't have board right now over here, I can't write over here. So uh, I'm just going to let it go. Uh, later on, we are good. Uh, you, you can check it out in your books, this part. Okay, there's a proof in your book. You can check it out and you can see it there. Like, you are, first of all, you are going to get the uh, volume of the here cylinder over here. When you get the volume of the cylinder, you are going to apply here M equal like, uh, um, this is density row times volume when you apply it here you are going to see that like around 7.9 newton uh, force you are going to see okay so let's go to the some use of air pressure uh, air pressure is very useful we use air pressure like application of air pressure in our daily lives frequently so uh, what are these use of the air pressure the first one is common pump you can use this pump uh, in your home like you can use it uh, it relies on atmospheric pressure and it, uh, it carries the water, the common pump. Drinking straw, the straw over here that you guys use, like when you drink something, you use the straw. So also, uh, when you use straw, you are going to have an application of atmospheric pressure over here. Okay. When you push the air inside of the like uh, liquid, uh, the air pressure is going to apply over here on the surface of the uh, like liquid and this is going to be another application the third application is going to be a lift pump lift pump again there is air over here as you see there's a lift pump over here it relies on the uh, atmospheric pressure to move water again when you apply it, like here lift pump when you apply it when you apply here for example what's going to happen when you apply it it is going to take water here and when you release it it's going to take water up and up and then it is going to give water Away. So this is also used atmospheric pressure uh, in order to operate. The next one we have suction pad. It is a round rubber pad that relies on atmospheric pressure to stick smooth surfaces. Suction pad. You, you guys, you guys have sticky notes, right? Those sticky notes also uh, they use uh, what do you say? They use atmospheric pressure uh, to stick on the surfaces. Okay. And the, the fifth application is force pump. The force pump again, when you like pull the pump up, it is going to take water and it's going to carry the water from uh, to other uh, body. So it relies on again atmospheric pressure. It compresses the air to move water uh, often for the great height. At home, you generally generally at home if you you guys have a, a tank at the top of your houses. Uh, you use force pump to pump the water from there to top of your uh, houses, okay? Force pump. We use it to pump water to a greater height, okay? Bicycle pump, you guys know already this, the bicycle pump. You are familiar with this. Uh, you, again, this also uses the atmospheric pressure in order to operate. When you apply, for example, when you apply the uh, air downward, it is going to take the air and it's going to pump into your uh, bicycle wheels, okay? Or you can like pump uh, air to your uh, balls as well. You can do that too. The siphon, again, the siphon also another application. The siphon, what is a siphon? The siphon that you use uh, when you go to the bathroom, the siphon, that one. That is also used the, when you flash, when you go to the bathroom, when you flash it, uh, that, that device is called a siphon. It uses the atmospheric pressure again. It carries the liquid from one place to another. Okay. So fluid pressure. We have uh, on the other hand, we have fluid pressure. We are going to start the fluid pressure. Let me see how many minutes we have. Actually, we can just uh, we can just start this part and we are going to finish it uh, uh, later on. Okay. So fluid fluid pressure. Let me see if there is any questions. No, you don't have it. Okay. 
So what is a fluid? A fluid is a substance that will flow. It can be a gas or a liquid. Okay, it can be both of them. Uh, what does flow mean? Flow means like smooth, unbroken movements of a substance. For example, water. When you pour the water into a cup, the water is going to move like that. It's going to flow inside of the water. Okay, so it's unbroken movement of the of a substance. In common use of fluids, tend to mean just liquid, but we have gas as well. Okay, in science, we use uh, fluid for gas and liquids. It is not just for the liquids. Generally, when we like when I say liquids, you guys may recall just liquids but it, it, in science you are going to recall these two gases as well as liquids okay what is a liquid a liquid is a substance that has a part that has the lid little like uh, that has a weak bond between its particles and they are uh, like they are not that much close to each other but they they can still move together okay another characteristic of fluids they can change their shape right they have certain volume uh, when you put in uh, when you put the liquid inside of a bottle or inside of a cup it's going to take the shape of the container okay liquids are incompressible what does incompressible mean it means you cannot hold the liquid for example think about it if you pour water inside your hand can you hold the water no you're not going to be able to hold the water you cannot compress it when you compress the water what's going to happen the water is going to like just uh, pour uh, speed split or around okay so it is on incompressible liquids are incompressible okay when you apply the force on the liquid uh, the volume of the liquid will stay the same so here we have uh, some uh, characteristic of liquid and gases for particles parts uh, liquids are quite close together with no sad pattern Particles can move past each other easily. For the gas part, the particles are way apart, right? They are not even touching each other properly. And they can move really fast. The gas particles, they can move really fast uh, because uh, they don't have any bond together. So there is no bonding together for the gas part. A liquid parts, for bonding parts, they have weak bonds between the particles. But on the other hand, for the gas, there is no bond between the particles. So that's why they can flow easily. Uh, the gas, the liquid particle can flow and change their shape to match a container. The gas particles also, they can do the same thing. Uh, the, the liquid particles particle are not compressible. On the other hand, the gas particles are compressible. You can compress them inside of the uh, containers easily. Okay, you can catch, you can catch uh, like gas particles. When you like wave your hands, you're going to feel the air, right? That is because of air is gas, so you can feel it. You can catch it or you can compress the particles uh, over there. Okay, so let's stop here. Let's stop here. Let me start pause recording.